Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where I definitely remembered to bring out our solar panels and didn't have to pretend to launch a new ship. <laughs> We're going to warp to our Kerbin Escape. And we're going to take a quick look here at uh, what Duna's doing. Duna's over here right now. Not bad, not bad. Not perhaps the best, but we'll go at 404 days. Hang on. 404 days to be here. 404 to be here. Oh, one hour to be here. Perfect. It's just we're moving forward. I gotcha. Okay. Okay. We are now officially in orbit over the sun. We could do a mystery goo observation here, but I'm not going to. This mystery goo observation is intended for Duna. So we're going to do that. We're going to go ahead and set Duna as our target. And then ascending node is all the way over here, but it's so close. So we're going to try to find ourselves an encounter. Realistically, if we were to... And big in our orbit here. How close would we be? Quite a long ways away. This, however, is getting a lot closer. We may have to do an orbit. Uh, let's see what it would look like if we were... Realistically. Yeah, I think we need to do an orbit. It's so close up here. And then so far away after the next orbit. This is kind of our window, right? Just looking at this. Can we tweak this in such a way as to where we burn extra delta V? Because we've got plenty. Hello. There is an encounter here. It's a very brief one. There it is. What's it look like? I mean... <laughs> it's pretty far away from what we want. Let's see if we can't adjust that in at all. So let's bring this guy down. Try to match planes a little bit. And then see if we can bring it in ever so slightly. Oof. Come on. I'm so close here. Ah! Stop! No, stop. Where did it go? Where did it go? Come back. Sometimes it just does so much that I don't want it to do. Okay, so that's going to give us an encounter with Ike, which isn't exactly what we want. But we can go ahead and move this back a little bit further to be something like this. That's a manageable encounter right there. Okay. So all we have is SAS here, but that's okay. This is going to be a 1 minute 13 second burn. We've got plenty of fuel for this, so our transfer window isn't ideal here. If we had launched a few days earlier, like maybe a week or two earlier, it would have been a better transfer window or, you know, waited a year and a half or so. But, um... We have the extra fuel, so we can go ahead and just burn. I'm going to warp to this next encounter, which is uh, over here. 1 minute 13 second burn, so we're looking at burning this at, what, like 37 seconds? T minus 37 seconds? Thereabouts. Okay, we are going to be burning very shortly. I'm just going to... Oh, almost overshot there. 
and less burn. Now this is going to be not quite a pure prograde burn, or retro? No, this is going to be prograde. Not quite a pure prograde burn, because we need to get a slight radial shift in there, 0.1 degrees in total, but it's fine. So we're finally finishing up our first stage. We've got plenty of Delta V. Get out of here first stage. No, get out of here first stage. There we go. And off we go to Duna. And we need to make sure we really nail this and we get this pretty close to where we want to be. Note is drifting slightly. Okay. Just gonna attempt to fight the SAS a little bit here. Okay. What's that look like? We want to be a little retrograde from here. That is acceptable. I can work with that. So how far away is that? That is a year away. It'll take us a year to get there. I don't think we have any contracts expiring in the next year, do we? But I, I don't know that for sure. We should go check. While we're there, I'll check to see how much that probe actually cost us to launch. And if it was more than 25k, I'll deduct additional funding. How much was it? 52k. Okay. Well, round it to 53. So let's go ahead and do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. That gets us to 50k. And then 1, 2, 3. Okay. So it's just like we launched it again and spent a couple of extra space bucks on it. So let's go ahead and hop back out of here and let's check our contracts now to see if we have any contracts that are going to be expiring within the next year. Uh, let's see here. Nine years doesn't expire. Nine years, 12 years, 15 years, 22 years. We're good. Okay, let's go ahead and get this done. So we're going to go ahead and fly the commsat. And then we will warp forward to Duna, to the Duna encounter, and then we'll just get in that synchronous orbit and call it good. So where are we now? We are currently here. We want to head to Duna and warp to somewhere like here. And off we go. It's going to be a pretty lengthy warp, of course, because it's a year long, but that's fine. We'll get there soon enough-ish. I mean, it's it's actually going to be a while. So I guess we should talk about something entirely different and off-topic then, shouldn't we? <laughs> I mean, it's not strictly speaking off-topic. What I would like to discuss here is what the actual plan is for how we're going to be structuring the other two spokes. So what we want to do is we want to get a system set up where we have our other two spokes on our Minma space starting with a mining and production module com combined. So it's going to it's going to mine ore for Minmus and then produce for the first for, for the first corridor stack, whatever you want to call it, the the first lane, I, I don't know, the first docking port. That one's going to be fuel. And then the second one is going to be monopropellant. Actually, we're probably going to do it the other way around to complete the uh, complete the contract sooner. So monopropellant and fuel, and then we'll just be able to construct it with convertitrons. Those are going to need cooling and power. So that's going to be a thing. 
Um, so the mining and production modules will be the first thing there, and they will probably never be detached, right? So they'll probably never, ever get detached, but we're going to then have attached to them further out from the base core is going to be storage modules. And those are going to be detachable because they're going to double as our rovers, and here comes Mars, or rather Duna. <laughs> they're going to be our rovers, right? And they're going to be able to attach, well, not attach, but th they're going to be able to, we're control locked? Huh. We have limited probe control because we have no data here. I thought for sure that antenna would be enough. Oh, it's because of our current position in the orbit. We're on opposite sides right now. Okay. How do I want to handle that? Well, how long do we have before we uh, get out of here? I mean, two hours to the periapsis. That isn't going to change. I mean, yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> When we escape, we're still going to be on a decent connection here. But realistically, looking at this... Oh no. Clearly I should have pre-programmed this. But I mean, the idea was simply to circularize here, right? So... And, and I had that idea the whole time. I just didn't put in the maneuver beforehand because it can get wacky when you do it before. So that was the pre-planned idea. I think, oh man, I hate doing this so much, but I think what I'm going to do is, is there even a way to uh, like turn off the, the comm net here? That's our flight info, version info, delta V info, blah, blah, blah. Is the cheats to set orbit? I don't want to do that. Um. Is the contracts? Is it just an option, not a cheat? Settings. Difficulty options. Enable comm network. It's not even a cheat. Okay. So the idea was that we would then just add a maneuver here that would just circularize... Well, not that much. That would just circularize this. And then this would, this would then be automatically, uh, automatically done. We'll just bring it down to about where this apoapsis would have been. So about a little beyond, probably. About right here. Okay, so here's the idea. That was pre-programmed in the flight computer, because there's no way that I would have launched that without this plan in mind, right? It's going to circularize. So that was pre-planned there, and then we'll execute this node. This is like pre-programmed that this is exactly what it does. And then from there, we can wait until Duna is closer in, right? So that would be the idea. So we want to go ahead and burn this basically now, actually. This is going to burn off most of this tank just to break us. And that's the first flyby of Duna. We can't get any data back because we're not connected. But what we can do is we just break here. And this was the pre-planned break. I didn't create the node, but 
it was obviously planned that we would circularize this and just not do a flyby. This was planned to be in orbit, so. From here, all we have to do is wait until Duna and Kerbin are more aligned. So once Duna and Kerbin are more aligned, then of course, we will be in a position to set up our actual orbit because we'll, we'll see what our trajectory is and we'll be able to get science data back and all that fun stuff. But first we need to get into an orbit and then we can work on fixing it and getting it into this orbit. Are we going the correct direction? We're going this way. So we're going to be going this way. We're going to have to reverse our directionality, actually. That's not the end of the world. So as soon as we're done with this burn, I'll go turn the comnet back on. And then we will say from there that we're good to go. Man, that's two mistakes of my own making. The first one, I was willing to call it a, uh, call it a loss and just take the monetary hit of launching another one. This one, it, this should have been pre-programmed, right? This was, this was always the plan. This is not a deviation from the plan. Hopefully we don't have an Ike encounter. <laughs> that would make things super awkward. Okay, so we just execute this basically just locked into place. About like that. Okay. And there we go. Now we need to wait until we get the comm net back. So we can go into our settings, difficulty options, and put this back on enable comm net. And now we have no probe control, but that's ideal. We shouldn't have probe control. Okay, so now the question is, how long until Kerbin and Duna are in sufficient alignment that we have a connection? Well, that certainly is the question, isn't it? Anyway, it is time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Subscribe for more, and next episode, we'll get this fully squared away. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> See you all next time.